previous videos, we showed you how to run SDR Connect to control a locally connected RSP, in this case an RSPDX. When you do this, of course, you have control over tuning and also the various device settings, sample rate, antenna selection, and so on and so forth. In addition, in previous videos, we showed you how to set up your local RSP for remote connection using a terminal window to start the server. Here we see the server running. The problem is, what happens if you want local control over that local RSP when the server is running? If we start SDR Connect again, we no longer see the RSPDX because it's in use by the server. So to get around that, we have to run this instance of SDR Connect as a client and specify the server we wish to connect to. So we hit the plus, we give it a name, I'll just call it local. We need to specify our IP address, which can be found either in your network settings or by looking in your router settings. In my case, it's 10.0.0.1.7.9. Verify the port number is the same as you're using in the server and click Save. Once we've done that, we can refresh the device list. And now we see our server appears. So now if we press play or start, we see signals just as we did before. And once again, we have full control over the RSP in terms of uh, antenna, input, bias T, so on and so forth. If we now go look at the server, we see it's now showing that we do have a client connected. So now we have the local server running and we're connected to it on the same PC. But we can still connect additional clients to it. By default, the server allows for up to eight clients to be connected. So for this example, I'm going to bring up another computer on my same network. Uh, it doesn't have to be on the same network if you set up port forwarding. It could be a computer elsewhere accessing this network via the internet. Let me make this screen a little bigger so we can see what's going on here. So uh, on the remote machine, we need to start SDR Connect. And once again, we see there are no local RSPs connected to that device. So we need to set up for connection to a server. And we put in the same uh, information we did before. I'll call this uh, Steve server. And the IP address, since I'm on my local network, it would be my local IP address. If you were coming in from the internet, you would have to use the WAN IP address and uh, allow for port forwarding. We can save that. Close that down, refresh the device list. And uh, typically if you're on the internet, you'd probably connect uh, using the audio mode versus IQ but I should have plenty of bandwidth on my local network here. So we can go ahead and start that. And now again, we see the signals that uh, are, are being forwarded from the server. Now we can tune across the uh, displayed band, but if we now go to the device settings, we see that they are grayed out. Those uh, device settings can only be set by the first client, which is connected to the server, which we have uh, for local control. And uh, let me minimize this a little bit. Here we go. And uh, there we see it uh, inset. And again, over here on our local machine, we have full control over the device. So, so in summary, if you want to run both the server and have full local control of your RSP, first start the server and then run the client of SDR Connect add the server information and connect to the local server. This will give you full local control of the RSP, but also you have the ability for other clients to connect remotely, either from your local network or perhaps for a friend connecting remotely via the internet. Please refer to the other videos on networking for more information. 
Thank you for watching this video. We hope you found the information useful. Please refer to our website at sdrplay.com for the latest updates on SDR Connect and the RSP family of software-defined radios. 73.